Okay, I'm going to be um, drawing this really lovely picture of a horse by Pixel Bay off Pexels, which is royalty free. So it's a great resource, check them out. I'm going to keep it really simple. I've just got some um, sugar paper ultimately here. It's a, a bluey grey, which is rather lovely to work on, especially for this type of drawing. I've got a charcoal pencil and a potty rubber. Now I've sharpened my charcoal pencil to quite a fine point, so I've used a knife and then I've used a sanding board. You could use a sanding board or if you haven't got one, a, a nail file. It's pretty good at doing the same job. I do have a few different charcoal pencil manufacturers. Uh, you can see one is very soft as it's come off in my hand. It's just personal preference on, on which one you want to use. I just grabbed this one, so it's nothing that flashy. And I've got a bit of tissue for blending. Do not use your fingers, mucky. To start off with, we're going to just sketch in the basic structure of the horse's head. I'm going to be holding the pencil towards the end, okay, and I'm going to be looking down on my piece of paper which is slightly angled, which will help. I've got a bit of a shortening on this because the camera is slightly lower coming in at the horse, so it means that the mouth is over dramatised in scale. Therefore the ears are going to appear smaller and the mouth is going to be appearing larger than you'd naturally anticipate it. Okay, that's pretty good. That's just a rough sketch finding where everything is, looking at the scales and the proportion of one segment to another, positioning of eyes, size of the nostrils, again the size and the positioning of the nostrils, any angles that you're starting to identify with the mouth. Okay, uh, I'm going to bring that neck down a bit bigger. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, I've got the the basic, basic structure down. I'm going to slide my hand down the pencil and I'm going to start drafting this in a little bit more polished. I rather love the curve that you get from the jaw shape. Quite beautiful. Especially with the reins, it exaggerates that arch.
negative space. I'm kind of using the underside, so I'm getting a thicker, very soft line. It means it'll be easier to rub it out if I'm going wrong. And I'm going to go wrong at this stage. I'm still really thinking about how this all works and joins together. too wide so I'm just zooming that in a little bit. I might change it in a little while but I'm going to grab my putty rubber and I'm going to now crisp up to a fine drawing.
up some of these guidelines. So you should end up with something roughly like that, okay, um, the more accurate you can get the better. Like I said there is a slight distortion on this because um, the camera's looking up at the horse, therefore the nose is much bigger than it actually should be. It's good to keep to the distortion that you can see on the reference image, it'll make life a lot easier for you. Don't draw what's in your head, draw what you can see. You can also see that I started drafting in roughly where the muscles and bone structure is come, kind of coming together on the horse's head. It does need a little bit more of a clean up. Um, if I just go around the other part of your rubber, take that out. And please note how the eye was built out of a circle. It was not an almond shape. The amount of almond shaped animal eyes I see over the years. I got a pan for everyone. I would be super rich not worrying about pension scheme, shall we say. So, you can see I built that up from a circle and then I brought it down into a slight teardrop. It needs to be a bit more refined and playing with, but it's got a rough position and the location looks pretty accurate. You can see that this eye over here is juttering out because you're seeing the socket, not the eye. You'll get a few eyelashes when we work that in but it's important that you get that angle correct. Okay, now it's all about tone work. So with the tone work, you can use um, charcoal powder if you wanted to. You could use charcoal sticks. 
I would be very concerned that if you were using any compressed charcoal sticks because they're going to go too dark too quickly. If you're a little bit nervous, you could use charcoal pencil. I'm going to use charcoal pencil because I said I do this quite fine work and the pencil will allow me to do it. So first of all you can see how blunt my pencil has got, I need to make sure it's nice and sharp. So if I swap that for one of my pre-sharpened pencils, there you go, it's magic like blue Peter. And then I'm going to start working on this. Be aware if you're right handed that generally it's good to work from left to right. This way you won't smudge the work that you're working on. If you're left handed obviously move the other way around. It depends on how you grip the pencil and how you feel comfortable but be aware of where that hand is. The heat and the moisture off your skin will move the charcoal about if you're not careful. Um, now by having it nice and pointed you're looking at initially using this undersided area of the charcoal pencil. If in doubt First of all, work in the areas that are extremely dark. I forgot to just draft in this D ring that's in here. I'm just going to quickly place that in. Um, so I can get that in there. It's going to come up over. That's going to come in, that's coming in over there. And take out any of the excess. So by using that underneath side, I'm going to start working on that to start with. I'm thinking of the contour of the stretch structure I'm trying to represent. Okay, I initially did draw down a box shape that I know that I want to work in for that area. And I'm gently filling that in, slightly going over. I'm really examining my initial ideas. Now it's important that you can see this highlight. It's all going to be about contrast and the direction of your mark to generate this illusion that the form is has three dimensional depth ultimately. So be aware of that. You can see I'm just putting in a guideline of where I want that to be. I'm bringing down that charcoal tone but I'm trying to do it quite softly. Now you can see the harder tone up here. It's not as hard as I'm going to take it, but it's the initial hardness that I want. Okay. I'm doing these diagonal downward marks. Then I'm going to get a bit of kitchen roll and I'm going to use that to blend out the charcoal. I'm not using my finger. It's not good practice to use your finger. I'm going to use the charcoal. Okay, use the charcoal. I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the kitchen roll. Right that time and fuzz all the edges but I don't have those crisp edges. And you see it's come off on there. I'm just gonna come back in. Now if you're finding it's not doing too great a job, you can take a bit and you can breathe on it. A little bit of warm air will blend out your charcoal as well quite smoothly. Now I'm going to go back in and because I've got charcoal already laid down, charcoal will stick to charcoal on top of it really well. It's a little bit like graphite, graphite's good for doing in the same technique. Now I can see the hardness of the shadow that's coming down here so I'm giving it a little bit more of a crisper edge tone and I'm taking it quite deep. There you can see how deep to take that darker tone in. I'm taking a little bit of paper. I'm just going to blend out the edges to fuzz them up. You should be getting something like that. Now I'm going to work on this bit up here. So again, I've got that rain that just needs to kind of come up, arching over the ear. It's going to be kind of coming down there. And I've got highlight coming in. I'm using the paper for my highlights. So I can use a putty rubber and lift stuff off if I go too dark. Depends on how well the paper's been made to how far you can take that. You may find that if you push your luck, you'll end up making the paper fall. Well, you push your luck, 
you'll find that the paper starts falling apart. So be gentle. I'm going to take my putty rubber and I'm just remove a little bit. A little bit darker around here. And you can see that's the beginning of the left hand side of his neck. Now it's just repeat the process through the whole head. And it's about paying attention, really looking at where you can see the muscle definitions and build the light and dark tone.
There you go, roughly a nice horse.